Now, of course, it is the festive season, and um, uh, champagne sales do uh, quite naturally, uh, uh, you know, uh, climb quite dramatically in the festive season, and that's a great thing. Mm. Um, personally, I'm a fan of drinking champagne all year round. Mm. Um, but uh, look, uh, I think what would be very useful for our users is just to briefly, I um, perhaps briefly cover off your champagne styles. Um, mm. Firstly, the brut, which is the house style, basically. It's the entry, it's, it's the a showcase of what um, Tattinger is. I, I, um, I would say the brut, the envy, non-vintage, it's yeah. the first style. Yeah. I think uh, Tettinger, it's, uh, it's one style yes. at the end. From the brut, the non-brut reserve, to the Comte de Champagne, yeah. it's one style, one philosophy. Mm. The one to make very, uh, very elegant, the one to be very feminine, very, uh, very fresh, very pure, very precise wines, you know, mm. and uh, it's exactly what is uh, what is Tetanger. We are not big wines. We are no. not very bodied wines, but you know, we are extremely solid, extremely consistent, mm. and refined, light wine, uh, joyful wine, you know, mm. and uh, and uh, lively wines. Which is um, which is why the house embraces, uh, I guess, a uh, large. Um, component of champagne and, and their production, I suppose, when you start talking about elegance. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the NV, um, definitely for me, I view that as a, I, I view that as a, um, it's my favourite style of mm -hmm. NV champagne. And why, I, from my point of view, why I enjoy it so much is one, um, I think it makes a fabulous aperitif style of champagne. Um, and aperitif meaning that you, know, you can have a few nibbles or you can have it without nibbles and you can drink a couple of glasses of it and it just keeps, you know, your palate stays lovely and fresh and, 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 and uh, it has that elegance as you mentioned. Conversely, it actually is, uh, it's still got <coughs> enough weight in the champagne and beautiful structure to be good with food as well. So it's, it kind of crosses both boundaries. Yeah, ex um, exactly. Uh, uh, I mean, um, as uh, if the, the non-vintage is more, let's say, uh, first an aperitif wine and so on, it yeah. goes perfectly with, uh, with food. But I would say, generally, you know, uh, I mean, uh, generally, um, champagne and whatever, Tétanger or yeah. another, it's a question of emotions. Yes. It's a question of instinct. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, if you have the instinct that you know uh, the non-vintage can goes very well with oysters from the yeah. the bluff from New yes. Zealand or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it will go perfectly, yeah. and it's already. I mean, uh, it's it's already a, it's already an obvious match. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But after, it's more yeah. about you to make your experience yeah. and to uh, and to see if it matches or not. But by instinct and by experience, you know. Uh, Okay, now um, the rosé I've always thought is a fantastic style. Yeah. Uh, again, because you mentioned about uh, Tattinger's, pursuit, Tattinger's pursuit, pursuit of elegance, mm. and that's a lovely rosé style. You get those beautiful rosé flavours in the wine, but again, it's an elegant style of champagne. So what's that? Is that is there a, a kind of Chardonnay component driving? Yeah, that as always well? Chardonnay. We yeah. Tattinger, we are always, as you know. Uh, as you know perfectly, always yeah. uh, very much Chardonnay driven. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, always very much Chardonnay driven, and you always find, you know, and in the rosé, it's uh, it's very predominant. You always find, you know, in the back, you know, uh, in the palette, you know, there always the big, uh, the very, uh, the very thin, fresh, lemony frame, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the 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 hints of elegance which are uh, characterizing, you know, uh, our wines. The end of the end of rosé does not escape to the tradition of Tétanger, no, not at all. Chardonnay mm. and Pinot Noirs, you know. Um, so the the, the 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 power, the fruit, the the depth of the Pinot Noir, yes. balanced with the finesse of the Chardonnay, yeah. and I think you have a perfect, soft, lovely wedding. Yes, absolutely. Now, uh, Prelude, that's one I want to touch on today because yeah. um, uh, it's a fa fantastic pa packaging actually, mm. it's an amazing looking uh, uh, package and uh, the wine itself I know recently just had huge success in Decanter who of course are probably one of the most regarded international sort of uh, adjudicators on wine if you like. Mm. Um, I think picking up a trophy in Decanter and Gold and deservedly so but stylistically I think there'll be a lot of New Zealand uh, uh, champagne drinkers out there that would not know uh, Prelude and would be confused as to just what that style is. So can you give us a little bit of an insight? Into yeah, that? Prelude is uh, it's, uh, it's one of the new baby of uh, Tightinger family, Tightinger uh, uh, teams. 
And uh, Prelude is a um, uh, Prelude Grand Cru. Oh. It's a it's a selection of the it's a wine made of the best grapes. Yes. The best grapes of Champagne. You know, yeah. in Champagne, you have about 320 villages. Yes. Uh, and 17 of them are rated Grand Cru. Yep. And uh, Grand Cru villages. And uh, you know, it was uh, it was uh, it was to propose our friends, our, our our customers, you know, all around the world, uh, a wine which were representing all those uh, best grapes, mm. uh, those best grapes, those best villages, to give them uh, quite a quite a very broad picture of uh, Champagne excellency. Mm. But I also had a good uh, at a good uh, at a good price. Yes, not to. Uh, not to, uh, to make it uh, unaffordable, but at the contrary, to, um, to make a step between the non-vintage, the classic non-vintage, mm. and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the very premium, uh, premium wines, you know, uh, yes. and premium prices yep. as well. Stylistically dry? Dry, dry, very mineral, yeah. very, uh, very elegant. And very a, good, a good component of Chardonnay in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, 50-50. 50-50, okay. great. All right. But the great component of elegance. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I think uh, uh, vintage, of course, is really just a reflection of vintage, really, for the house, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, the vintage, you know, uh, and I will not speak only for, uh, for Tétanger, but the vintage, uh, the vintage things, you know, it's not um, a predominant commercial issue. Uh, for Champagne. No. I mean, um, the, 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 main, uh, the main battle, you know, is still, uh, is still, uh, is still made uh, on the non-vintage uh, Champagne, you yes. know, uh, yep. and uh, with different, uh, different uh, range into yes. the non-vintage. But um, the vintage, we are releasing, Tétanger, we are releasing a vintage uh, in every uh, exceptional year, yes. every good year. Yes. Uh, but it's not uh, it's not every year, and uh, it's always been you know traditionally a vintage. Enfin, when we launch a vintage, it's always been a good wine. Yes. Uh, so it's a good wine, but it is actually <coughs> more a reflection of vintage as opposed to say the house style, mm. which I think you can always go to a Tattinger Brut MV, mm. and you always know that's Tattinger. Exactly. Um, whereas with the vintage, it's just more of a reflection of the vintage, which is capturing perhaps the characters and the excitement of the vintage. Which finally brings me to, um, well, uh, the king of Tattinger champagnes or um, Tattinger Comps champagne. And of course you produce it in a Blanc de Blanc style and a Rosé style. Uh, but look, this is, there are a number of prestige champagnes from the, the I guess, the Grand Marc houses. I mean, people typically know Dom Perignon. Um, you uh, obviously have champagnes like Krug. Um, uh, and uh, Bella Park, I guess, uh, Cristal. So it's in that it's in that company. That's that's where it's positioned. But in actual fact, to me, um, personally, it's my greatest uh, prestige luxury champagne mm. experience. And I think why? Because um, I love the fact that it's driven by Chardonnay. For me, that's what really does it for me. Uh, and of course, all Grand Cru fruit mm. uh, and um, a little surreptitious use of oak. The yeah, very, yeah. very, uh, very, very su subtle, uh, subtle use. Subtle yeah. use, you know. Yeah. I mean, we are, um, we are not. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, it's a very wild, uh, very pure and wild champagne. You yes. know, uh, yeah. we don't want to uh, to build fences on it, you know. No. But at the contrary, when you have the chance to uh, to have a wine made with the best of champagne, with yes. maybe one of the one of the best terroirs of France, you know, yes. called the Côte des Blancs in Champagne, you yes. know. Um, uh, I mean, the, the only thing, the, the less you can do is to less the champagne, uh, to less the wine, you know, to less uh, uh, the finesse of the grapes express, express itself yes. uh, mm -hmm. and wait, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, wait, uh, and wait a long time, you know, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to get, you know, to get a proper, uh, proper wine. And so we're looking here at the current release being 1999 vintage, so mm -hmm. basically 11 years old. Yeah. So um, you're releasing it as a 10 year old wine, I think, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So that's fantastic. You're really, uh, you're, you're releasing it at a, 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 to really show off what the wine is all about. What, yeah, uh, exactly. What, how it's created, why it's created. Mm. Um, and it will age further than that, of course, if people want to put it in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have uh, the Combe de Champagne among the wine, uh, the wine lovers is uh, considered to be uh, 
the greatest, or one of the greatest champagne, you know, mm -hmm. and particularly when they uh, they are uh, they are uh, they are more aged, because the Chardonnay, as it's a blanc de blanc, 100% uh, Chardonnay, uh, the Chardonnay needs uh, add, needs more time to get mature, but also add more aging potential. Yeah. So uh, this wine can age can age wonderfully and will remain will remain very fresh, you know. Uh, maybe uh, 30 or 40 years, you know, yes. I, I had recently uh, a 40, uh, 71 uh, in my cellars uh, in, yeah. uh, in Rheims. We drank that with, uh, uh, with a great friend and the wine was uh, really a baby, you know. Uh, mm. and, um, but you know me, I, I, like the, you know, I like the vintage of my times. Yes, <laughs> good on you. Yeah. Um, champagne, uh, finally, uh, one more question of you, just while I very carefully put that beautiful bottle of champagne back up there. Mm. Um, champagne, I know, um, you know, it's, it is your life, uh, but as a beverage, um, you regularly partake in champagne? Every day. Every day, yeah. A, a bottle a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some great stories about um, uh, the champenois living for very long mm. lives uh, and indulging in their own beverage every day of their life. Yeah. Uh, and certainly there's some great little anecdotes about that. Uh, uh, Madame Lily Bollinger's um, little anecdote about champagne. But uh, uh, I think, um, uh, you know, for people out there, uh, uh, I think New Zealanders, where we're, we're quite kind of new to champagne, if you like, uh, <coughs> I think one of the things that we need to do is think about approaching champagne differently. Because I love the French, um, uh, the champenoise sort of, um, uh, I guess uh, their attitude is that that champagne. Um, don't wait for a celebration. Don't wait for a celebration to open a bottle of champagne because champagne itself just creates a celebration, doesn't it? It really does. Champagne. I mean, uh, champagne creates a celebration. Yeah. Champagne makes you feel well. It does. I, I mm. believe it's a kind of uh, elixir or kind of uh, elixir of joy mm. or uh, sometimes a kind of aphrodisiac as well. Yeah. Uh, and um, you know, uh, I think it's also the wine of um, a wine of, uh, of seduction. I mean, uh, we, uh, I mean... Uh, you can personally speak from that. Speak yeah, exactly, yes, you know. <laughs> but you, I mean, uh, it's uh, for, for a French, the poor French that I am, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's difficult, you know, and yeah. to, uh, to seduce a nice lady at the bar, you know, uh, uh, by proposing her, uh, by proposing her, you know, uh, a pastis, you know. Even if the pastis is very good, you know. Um, so the champagne, you know, is, uh, is you know, really stands for uh, love. For uh, for joy, for uh, you know, it's a very human, a very yes. human wine. Yes, and uh, it's a it's a communication way. It just kind of brings people closer together, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and um, so, look, I'm a I'm a big fan, and I, um, uh, my darling Virginia and I drink champagne at home quite regularly, mm. uh, and we do firmly believe it enhances our life. Um, so uh, think about that out there, all of you uh, New Zealand uh, bubbly drinkers. Um, and of course now's the time of year to be, um, to be looking at champagne because we've got the festive season wine prices out there which are rather spectacular. Um, so uh, not just if you've got Christmas coming up, just to go and sit down with your partner and just have a, uh, uh, you know, open a bottle of champagne and have a memorable evening. It will, it will create that memory for you. Uh, but also if you've got a wedding coming up uh, sometime next year, if you've got a special function, uh, that you really want to celebrate with uh, true champagne, then Tatanjay is the great house of champagne. It's the great style, and at the moment, um, there's some great prices here at the Fine Wine Delivery Company. Look, uh, Clovis, it's been wonderful to have you uh, here in New Zealand again. Um, and uh, would you pass on the, our family's best wishes to your to your father, of course, your mm -hmm. dear father, who has hosted us in Champagne before and and is a wonderful man. Um, and of course, it's been a, you know great to have you back again. And uh, uh, we'll look forward to having you back here. here you again know, sometime, uh, so. we are very hooked. You know, uh, we are very hooked. Uh, my family, but also Champagne with New Zealand. Uh, for many reasons, you know, uh, a lot of New Zealanders, you know, died in um, yes. died in Champagne, you know, to, war, uh, yeah. to defend our country, you know, in yeah. the First World War, mm -hmm. and we uh, we believe we are very much linked to your country, mm -hmm. but you know, um, I, I really do hope that the the, the tiny, the, the elegant bubbles of Tetangé, you know, will bring to to you, your family, mm -hmm. your uh, your customers, you know, and uh, and uh, and all the people will bring uh, will bring them. Uh, 
luck, mm. all the success, and all the, the happiness, you know, for Lots the... Lots of happy moments. Yeah, yeah for, mm. the, for, the, for the following months, and mm. uh, in particular, uh, Christmas. Mm. Okay, and a great Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to and, you, Jeff. And uh, safe travels back to, uh, back home. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Cheers, Cheers.